My name is Tony Lazara. I'm John Whelan. Hi, my name is Dara Quinn, and, and this, this is, is our story. story. My name is Tony Lazara. I'm a pediatrician from the United States. I've been in Peru now for 26 years. At about 1981, I was in neonatal intensive care uh, at uh, Emory University in Atlanta. And it just seemed like I was not in the right place, that I had to do something different, that my, I was not in the right direction. So I was invited to come to Peru by a Franciscan priest. I entered into his service worked with him for about four and a half years and then bought the home here in Chaclacayo in 1987. John from Carlo, a small little town in Ireland, uh, 28 years of age. I came here to Peru two and a half years ago and I came in December 2006. I first came to this Hogar to volunteer, to try out something short for a small time and here I am two and a half years later loving it for me this is the dream helping the kids of Peru just before I came here I was kind of all relaxed in the, the kind of the backpackers way of life came in late on Sunday night and all of a sudden we had kids from kids like with who are badly burned, kids with missing limbs, all jumping on you straight away, calling you Papa. Uh, it was completely overwhelming. It was like nothing I had ever experienced before. And um, from there, it just every day got better and better. When the kids come up to me now, you don't even see what's wrong with them. And um, when, they, when they call you Papa, it, it, it's a really special feeling. It's something I don't think you can take lightly. It's when they come up to you and call you Papa, it comes with a bit of responsibility. And, it's just amazing fun here. John. <laughs> John, no, no. No, vamos, por favor. Si, esta. Puedes. That's hilarious, Spider-Man. No. Our purpose is to help um, destitute, ill children. The children um, are housed in the home until they're well after which they return to their families. We pay for all medicines, surgeries, um, any type of treatment the child needs. Um, we also, while the child is here, we send them to school, educate them. Well, the biggest challenge is just administering the place, dealing with the children themselves, dealing with the employees, dealing with the physicians in Lima. And then the, the horrendous bureaucracy, trying to get things done, um, it can really weigh on one. I see the good results, uh, you know, with the children. Uh, we can't cure all of them, obviously. We can't make them all 100% better, but we get them to as far as they can go. They're thankful. Their parents are thankful, and uh, that's that's payment enough, I think. Every day, the energy of the kids, just giving something back. I was always one for giving a little and always wanting to give more. But I think it made me realize that we have way more in life to give. Then I set up an English school here, just with my folks. I told them what it would cost to, 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 to teach, get a private uh, tutor in for a year to teach the kids in between their classes and their, 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 um, their treatment. I got that, I saw how enthusiastic the kids were and I just thought, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leave this place and I absolutely have to. And yeah, that, that's pretty much why I stayed. We have a 22-year-old uh, adult who ha is a paraplegic. He, was, he suffered a spinal fracture, a vertebral fracture and severed his spinal cord. He's paraplegic. I mean, he's he's capable. He's he's uh, he's bright. The problem is he needs to. He would need to stay in Lima. Obviously, he would need to have a special home for him, someone to care for him, someone to take him to school, etc. Once he is educated, once he has an education, he could possibly get a job and then pay for help or pay for his upkeep. 
You see, that's a big challenge. That's a big hurdle for, for a child, for a person like that. But eventually, I mean, we can't keep him here forever. Eventually, he is going to have to leave. You know? So that's the problem. We want them to use their potential in a different way, to use it with their minds and to use it for the long-term development for them and also for their families. And this will give me the idea to start our new centre, the Centre of Education. Well, one thing that's really kind of brought us on is when, it, when we decided we thought it was a great idea, we really had to ask the kids if they think it was a good idea. So with all the kids who would be eligible to go into a school and who would really benefit from it, we talked to them. We asked them what their lives would be without, if they didn't have it, when they go back to, to, to normal life. And it was dreadful and it was absolutely horrific. And they all but none said they really, really, really wanted a school and they would really, really give it their all if they had the school. So when the children finished their treatment here at the Hogar, um, we envisioned to have a centre which uh, will house 40 children from the age of 13 upwards. So we hope that they'll come here. We'll have an education coordinator who will assess where the children are, where they, that we'll talk with the children, decide where they need to be, and we will go along the lines of creating a plan, an educational plan for the kids. Normal day to day for, a, for the kid in the home will be going to school from eight in the morning to three o'clock. This is a normal school time for Peruvians. In the evening then, we will have carry on, follow on classes in English, French, computers. If a, if a student is not getting his grades in school, we will have support for this kid to raise his grades. We will also have classes on Saturday and many extracurriculum classes. There'll be nurses on call, there'll be teachers, there'll be volunteers, there'll be, there'll be chefs, there'll be um, cleaners. They're, they are gonna get the, the best education that we can find around in Peru. We want them to, to get the education that they get if they're from a wealthy family in Peru. And the idea would then would be to, to put them through the educational system to a stage where they were extremely employable because the way they are now when they're leaving the home, they're not employable. They, they, they can't get menial work. Um, nearly all the ads, even if, if they're, they're physically able, even all the ads for some of the, the burn kids, it says you have to be presentable. Some of the ads say you can't even have burns and you have to be um, able-bodied and it, it, it really is a un, unless you have a skill and you differentiate themselves from, from where they are at the moment th they're not going to be able to find employment and, and that's our goal to, to bridge that gap so that so they'll be able to get employment. For a kid coming to our centre will be massive for the family. When I say massive I mean this will could be similar as in maybe a kid from America studying with NASA, maybe a kid from America going to Harvard these families don't know what education is. These families never had a life of education. For, for, these, for these parents to have their kid coming to our centre and getting the chances they will receive is massive for these families. So you'd be walking past and these kids in the wheelchair are egging you on, they're giving you the thumbs up, they're asking, how are things going? Is there anything I can do to help? And um, you just know it, it's not like the typical conversation you'd have with a, with a kid back in Ireland. You just know these kids are driven, they really want to succeed. But when I say centre, I don't mean this is a house. This will have six or seven bedrooms. It will have a, a school rooms, it will have a library, it will have a courtyard. This will be, for you or for me, to look at it, it will be a school. We have one in mind at the moment to purchase, and it's for sale, but we need the support of the people for this. We're getting there, we're halfway there. That other half will be able to purchase the centre and carry on our process of making this reality for the kids of Peru. The biggest motivation factor for me is, it's not just the kids who are going to be in our school, it's the kids who could be there in 10 years. The kids that I'm in love with now, the five-year-old little boys who come up to you and you're playing football with them every day, the idea that they're going to be in treatment here for many years. The, the five-year-olds that, that call you papa, that kiss you goodnight, the fact that you could help them by having this hogar, it just kind of, every time I even think about it, it gives me goose pimples. It'd be great to kind of provide some kind of future, just like a real dad would. With our plan, what we are doing, 
you will be donating towards a new process, a new idea for Lima, for Peru, to carry on the education of these kids, not only for their lives, but also the lives of their family. We want to put in a, in a plan in place that they can return to their uh, towns, provinces, and educate, be doctors, be teachers for their local communities. That is our plan, and with you donating to us, we can make this reality.